All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you today. And the first article I have is about Grin and Beam, and it's going to be a long one. So uh, get your popcorn out and, uh, you know, get real comfortable in your seats. At the end, I'm going to announce a couple of new Patreon subscribers and call you out for being so awesome. But uh, Grin and Beam Coin just came out recently, and they have the Mimble Wimble privacy feature. Well, uh, that's all said and good, but uh, Grin has an incredible hash rate, uh, incredible VC backers, lots of money into Grin, and a very wacky price, along with a lot of FOMO and all kinds of things. So, yeah, if you haven't heard of Grin yet, you should probably look it up or uh, sit back and listen for a little bit. So the past few weeks have seen the launch of two new privacy coins, Grin and Beam. Grin, the most hyped of the two projects, went live with the mining of the Genesis block on January 15th. Beam beat Grin into existence by a few weeks with its launch on January 3rd, uh, neatly coinciding with the 10th anniversary of Bitcoin. Both uh, utilize Mimble Wimble privacy technology and both have caused some considerable excitement within the cryptocurrency communities. However, both have already experienced their first negative headlines. For Beam, the negative headlines have been associated with technical issues on January 9th, just four days after the launch. Beam's official Twitter and, uh, account uh, warned users of a critical vulnerability, all previously released wallets. On January 21st, a uh, second unrelated issue caused the Beam blockchain to cease working, uh, describing um, that the issue is being caused by two cloned wallets, most likely created by copying the same wallet file, uh, the same cloned UTXO to the blockchain, resulting in incorrect cut-through processing and ultimately to an invalid block. And as you can see here, we have some uh, little errors on Beam. While Grin has yet to run any, any similar technical difficulties, it attracted its own share of negative attention as the price crashed soon after launch. Get this one. Uh, crypto reported a uh, on a 97% plummet from a high of $261 on release to $4.60 within 24 hours of mining the Grin's Genesis block, uh, which is was calling it the most expensive Genesis block one in history. <clears throat> So the idea was that there were so many miners on Grin and so much FOMO that you basically, unless you had a whole farm, couldn't mine a single coin um, to yourself. You would just mine fractions in the same way that you mine Litecoin or any other high-priced coin. You just get fractions of it. But uh, this was pretty extreme as it just came out. Normally, any coin, even Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything that you start mining after it came out, uh, you, you got quite a bit, even though Ethereum kind of had the uh, whole uh, little ICO thing there. But uh, we'll, we'll look past that. But either way, uh, you did not get many coins from mining Grin. You also uh, have to have 8 gigabyte or greater graphics card. So if you have like 980s or something like that with four gigabytes or 1060s with six gigabytes, uh, it just won't work. So basically 1070s, 1080s, 1080ti's, etc. Anything with eight gigabytes or greater. Uh, you can see here, Grin, uh, this is the 24 hour chart, which doesn't look too crazy. Four dollars to uh, eh, back to about four dollars and 42 cents, but really looks pretty wacky uh, when you hit that seven day chart. Uh, started off at $261. So somebody uh, bought it for $261. I'm, I'm sorry for you. That's, uh, that, that hurt. Um, and then it was stu stuck around the uh, 15 to 25 30 dollar mark here and then just immediately bombed and ever since it was two dollars four dollars etc so was this a good coin is this a good coin or was it just fomo as there was a lot of vc backers uh, pretty much the most fomo of any new coin i would say in basically history um maybe not quite in history but at least in a recent history within the past year or greater uh grand coin uh has absolutely created the most fomo i think i've ever seen uh, but none of this was entirely unexpected, and it was apparently done little to dampen excitement around the two new coins. Beam's launch was preceded by an official blog post uh, warning that the project's innovation, innovative nature meant its early implementation was likely to contain bugs, defects, or errors, um, and it could adversely affect the use or functionality. Um, both projects have been in development for some time, and a lot of anticipation had built up ahead of their launch. Um, 
So one of the best known crypto figures to have voiced excitement at the launch of Beam and Grin is Litecoin founder Charlie Lee, who told the Magical Crypto Friends YouTube channel, which is just uh, super cringy, but it's actually kind of a good show, um, that these coins were able to provide privacy and scalability without sacrificing anything. Lee compared the coins and their underlying Mimblewimble technology with Zcash, which achieves privacy through adding data to the blockchain, thus making it less scalable. In contrast, Lee characterized Beam, Beam and Grin is achieving privacy because they throw away stuff really well said i guess uh, a crypto briefing describes grin as a scalable privacy coin that has no addresses no no amounts and is therefore less storage intensive than other privacy coins and digital currencies mimble wimble's data requirements are just 10 percent that of bitcoin making it more scalable less centralized and significantly faster so each transaction made using Bitcoin works by bundling as many of hundreds of inputs and outputs in order to maintain an accurate record of which coins have been spent, which coins remain in users' wallets. Mimblewimble allows Beam and Grin to drastically reduce this by creating a unique multi-signature key for each transaction. Equations then remove coins from the sender's wallet and add them to the receiver's wallet without publicly broadcasting the transaction to the entire blockchain network. A blinding factor is used on all transactions, adding noise to the publicly viewable portion of each transaction and making it impossible to see what has been sent and who has who was involved in the transaction. So uh, we're going to skip just a little bit um, and we're going to kind of go down to the bottom, but I will link this uh, in the description so you guys can read what I did not read, uh, but we're going to kind of move all the way down to the bottom to Bitcoin 2.0. Proclamations of either Grin or Beam being a Bitcoin 2.0 are sure to spark FOMO, so that's what it's being called, Bitcoin 2.0, I guess, and derision uh, in equal measure. Lee drew laughter from all the involved when he described Grin as the new Bitcoin, right? Question mark on Magical Crypto Friends, so it was a little sarcastic. Uh, but with its emphasis on decentralization and community driven development it's easy to see why grin's development has been compared to the original crypto uh, but with the main net less than a week old there's a long way to go before it can live up to such wild expectations and with a purposely uh deflationary supply it's been specifically i, I could talk i promise designed to prevent the type of rampant speculation that fueled bitcoin surge toward twenty thousand. i'm not sure why uh, a purposely deflationary supply is going to uh, necessarily prevent it from going to twenty thousand like bitcoin did uh but sure why not uh, with their incorporation of next generation crypto technology grin and beam are the most talked about new coins in quite some time whether they'll st uh, still uh, be big news 10 years from now is a question with a lot of money riding on it so i was reading that you know people were putting uh you know investors were throwing hundred million dollars at the project and things like that <clears throat> and uh it's quite interesting to see how grin exploded and how little people know about grin and, and and beam yet it's incredible hash rate and this incredible following at the same time so on one end you have this incredible following on this other end you have nobody that knows about it uh, i tried mining grin and uh you know if you like i said if you don't have eight gigabyte cards or greater uh which i do uh but some of them are not and uh you know i don't want to mine a coin that i can only just like half of the graphics cards and that's just eh, uh screw that um but supposedly it's pretty profitable at the moment uh in terms of its uh exchanges um let's see we, we got the uh, hot bit bit forex and uh, a bunch of goofy exchanges looks like tr it's on trade ogre as well uh, it is not on coin market cap interestingly enough just yet uh so you kind of have to go to coin gecko to look at the price uh so it's up by 23 percent but uh, again uh that's sort of a 24 hour up and uh again if you just pull it back to the seven day somebody was some people were buying it for 261 dollars a piece um for some reason and that did not last particularly long as you can see within like uh what is that like 40 minutes uh and within uh, you can see 15 uh and then let's see here within two hours it was at 25 dollars. so a few people a few poor chumps bought this for a couple hundred dollars and then uh it just it, it's immediately riding on for about four dollars now 
So the FOMO uh, was indeed that FOMO for now. Uh, will it be a great coin in the future? Maybe, but uh, for now, it's absolutely just FOMO and a $4 coin down from $251, which I'm sure there wasn't particularly a lot of volume. As you can see, there there really wasn't virtually any volume. When there was volume, uh, it basically started off at about $7, $10. Uh, so you can see here, uh, before that, there was basically virtually no volume that could even be recorded. So it was just a few people, basically, basically very little insignificant amount um, and now there's a lot more volume at about four dollars so this seems uh, uh, at the moment it's appropriate price so you can see with so much volume uh, people are starting to really just agree on a price which is around the four or five dollar mark um, and before that there was quite a bit of uncertainty as to what it would sell for uh, so moving on to the next article, the mastermind who planned Iceland's biggest hike, heist is jailed for four and a half years. So in case you guys didn't remember, I, I announced this on my channel quite a while ago, um, and I think it was sometime uh, earlier in 2018. I can't even remember the exact date, uh, but uh, basically somebody uh, went into a mining facility. Uh, he sentenced to four and a half years of prison, uh, and he received uh, the the mining gear that was stolen from. He received two hundred thousand in in uh, and Ventia received 200000 in, comp in compensation. So uh, the crime, dubbed the big Bitcoin heist by the media, saw the men steal over 600 mining computers from Advania. Uh, the equipment has yet to be recovered. Stevenson uh, managed to escape from the Song prison and board a flight to Stockholm uh, at the international airport of uh, Kefl Keflavik. Uh, according to police, he was using someone else's passport in an even stranger twist, Stevenson found himself on the same plane as the country's prime minister while on the run. He was later arrested in Amsterdam. So this guy uh, basically went into a mining facility, stole just unbelievable amounts of equipment, uh, 600 mining computers. Uh, you know, who knows how many graphics cards were each and each one of them or what exactly it was. Um, but... Um, you know, took a budge, then went to prison for it, then escaped prison and flew away and was arrested thereafter. And so he was brought back and now four and a half years in prison. So that actually seems pretty light, uh, at least in terms of United States standards. Uh, if you were to steal that much and get four and a half years, fair enough. Um, and um, so the six other partners were jailed for nine years and seven months. And yet this guy actually escaped prison, went somewhere else on a flight, was brought back, and now only has four and a half years. If you escape prison in the United States, uh, it's not good. I, I'm not you know, entirely sure of the laws and whatnot and what you're going to get, but uh, it's not going to be good. Uh, you're really going to at least double your sentence uh, if you escape prison. Uh, not going to be good. So in December 2017, the group had stolen 100 mining rigs. So it wasn't their first attempt to steal Bitcoin, uh, these guys. So in 2017, they stole 100 mining rigs from Agrim Consulting and later tried to steal from the uh, Borealis Data Center, but were un unable to get away with their haul after they set off an alarm. Police revealed the group also tried to steal BDC mines a couple of days later, but again, failed. So uh, not their first heist, heist at all. These guys have stolen a lot. Kind of an interesting story. Uh, you guys can look that up if you were uh, a little bit more interested in it. So this article here is very uh, interesting. Um, I, th I think it's filled with errors, and I would love to read it. So Bitcoin's proof-of-work algorithm needs replacing, argues a uh, study. So the proof-of-work algorithm used by Bitcoin and some other currencies is not viable in the long term. It needs to be replaced, argues a new study from the Bank of International Settlements. Fair enough. BIS, considered to be the central bank of central banks, published a research saying that proof-of-work uses a network of powerful computers to secure the networks. Extremely expensive, and the solution is to depart from using the algorithm. Author of the report, a principal economist for the Monetary and Economic Department that had, probably has no understanding of crypto in any way, uh, are two fundamental uh, economic limitations of the algorithm. The first uh, Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is vulnerable to double spending or 51% attacks, hence it requires extremely expensive protection based on proof of work. Well, that's true, uh, but B Bitcoin is the least likely to be double spent. Um, it would take an extremely extreme amount of money to, to double spend Bitcoin and probably in the really isn't worth it. I don't uh, remember of anyone ever attempting to do that. Uh, second, as the system stops reward awarding Bitcoin as block rewards, which is in like 2140, so I'm not really sure why anybody's worried about this right now, uh, the algorithm will not be able to generate transaction fees in line with the goal of guaranteeing payment security. False. Absolutely false. So when Bitcoin actually stops uh, awarding Bitcoin, 
because it's reached 21 million. Um, the all of the fees uh, go to the miners. So miners still actually send transactions through. Uh, in the blockchain and sends the transactions, you know, and purchases whatever transactions through, uh, they receive the fees from uh, from those transactions. So when Bitcoin, uh, if Bitcoin is still around in 2140, which honestly, I highly doubt that because in 2140, our planet is going to look totally different in terms of technology and our ideologies and our, our technology, everything. Um, <clears throat> But let's say that's true. Uh, I would say that Bitcoin is probably going to be worth a lot more than it is now. And a lot more people are going to be using it if it's still around in 120 years. I figured it would be uh, pretty wide, worldwide, if you will. And um, all of those fees being used by a worldwide network uh, will be paying the miners. Uh, it could be a problem in the future, but um, who knows? So simple calculations suggest that once block rewards are zero, it could take months before a Bitcoin payment is final. That's just false. That's just false. This guy's no idea what he's talking about. The miners are still going to be mining because they'll be getting the fees and likely by then uh, the, the fees will be pretty high because there'll just be so many people using it. That is if Bitcoin still exists in 2140. So it's just ridiculous. I don't even want to read the rest of it. Th th that's it. You got cut. You got cut off right there. You know what I'm saying? If you're in a conversation and you're telling me these things like in an article or if you were face to face with me, boom, like the conversation's over. It's t like you, you clearly don't understand Bitcoin at that point. It's done. Uh, so it's done uh, be months before it, it's the, the payments are final. So that means that nobody's mining. <clears throat> but if people were mining, then they'd be pushing the transactions through and it wouldn't be months. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Get, get this article out of my face. Um, economists have no idea what Bitcoin is. Uh, they don't even bother. They're just like, oh, I've read, I've read about it on the Internet. So I think I know what I'm talking about. Well, great that you have your economics degree. You know more about that than me. But uh, apparently not Bitcoin. So congratulations. <clears throat> so uh, the... NYSE Operators Long Awaited Platform Backed announces new key vacancies. Come on, guys, let's apply to Backed Futures. Backed, the cryptocurrency platform created by the New York Stock Exchange, announced they're hiring a number of high up positions in a tweet January 22nd. The Intercontinental Exchange, much awaited platform. Uh, publishes a list of eight evidently new vacancies at the company, all of which are based in Atlanta, New York City. Some of the positions are in Hong Kong, Tokyo, San Francisco, London, Tel Aviv, Singapore as available locations. The page specifies that the company is mostly trying to hire a number of developers, mostly at uh, director and senior levels. In particular, Bank is looking to hire a director of blockchain engineering, a blockchain developer, a director of security engineering, a senior full stack engineer, a mobile developer, and a software developer engineer in test. Also, the company is looking for a director of finance and at least one institutional sales member. As Cointelegraph reported on the last day of December 2018, the ICE announced that it expects to provide an updated launch timeline in early 2019 for the trading, clearing, and warehouse of uh, its backed futures. On the same day, news broke about the platform had uh, completed its first funding round, raising 182 million. So this was, uh, um, you know, the, the the article is new, but they're talking about the 182 million that was um, a little while ago. So uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at back back futures careers. Come on, guys. I know you guys are all directors of blockchain engineering. Uh, you know, uh, apply. Uh, why not? Uh, blockchain developer. We need a blockchain developer. Locations in Atlanta, New York, San Francisco, London, Tel Aviv, Singapore. All right. Uh, yeah, the, only the oh, if you're a director of blockchain engineering, only Atlanta, New York. So screw you guys. Um, director of security engineering, a senior full stack developer, a mobile developer, software developer, engineer and test and a director of finance and institutional sales. Uh, let's, you know, uh, in New York, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Tokyo. So, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, if you want to fly me to Tokyo, I'll be your institutional sales. Uh, that's paid for, right? Who knows? Anyway, moving on uh, to coin market cap here. 120 a billion market cap, yet everything is green. So everything is looking green and moving on up. Uh, but, um, you know, we have some pretty obvious pumps here going on in random coins. And uh, nothing too crazy going on. 52.4% Bitcoin dominance, $3,600 Bitcoin. So we move from that 3,500 to 3,600 again. And if we move back up to 4,000, it's probably time to sell and then, um, you know, get it back to 3,600 and rebuy it again because of the all the all the whale purchases that are clearly going on. Uh, so back futures um, was supposed to be January 24th and got pushed back because the SEC uh, is really slow and the government shutdown is making it even slower. So we'll have to see what happens with backed futures. But 
ahead in 2019, I don't see anything that will really hype Bitcoin um, to a very high price aside from Back Futures. So if Back Futures doesn't hype Bitcoin uh, to, a, to a high price or, or at least a steadily increasing price, I'm not sure what will in 2019 as of yet. Um, you know, because 2017 was clearly like BitConnect, Genesis Mining, referral programs, pyramid schemes, Tether, all those things that were just sort of pumping the price above a thousand, which it never really achieved much more than that previously. Uh, went to like 1100 and then bombed uh, a couple years before that so that was 2017 was a clearly a year of hype it was really never meant to, to get to 20,000 but things like BitConnect where people had to buy Bitcoin to put it into BitConnect and, and Genesis Mining everybody's you know it's like a gamification of your money um, and, and everybody was in on that and of course every YouTuber had a referral link for like BitConnect and Genesis Mining and things like that too there was people with zero subscribers that just made a YouTube that has 18 views on BitConnect just so that they could get one person to sign up to their referral program you know uh, everybody was attempting to do it so that's you know that's that is what it is uh, but that's just about all I have for you guys in the news I would like to announce a couple new Patreons I really thank you guys for uh, putting some money in, in for, for donating money to to my patreon because I, I i've had it for a while and nobody really donated it and then i kind of mentioned it the other day and a couple people did so i really appreciate that even if it's just like a dollar that helps a lot because if you know a lot of viewers do that uh it provides a little bit of income allows me to upgrade equipment things like that so i want to thank mr uh maestro for his two dollar uh donation on uh, patreon and i would like to thank john ambruso for his one dollar donation on patreon as well you guys will be listed in the description of videos now from now on uh, and anybody that uh, donates to the patreon will have their name listed down there as well so you guys can get your own little badge you don't get a badge but you can actually go out and buy your own badge and then put it on and then feel good about it but uh that's it for you guys today uh, make sure you subscribe like the uh video as well uh, links in the description to my Patreon, to my Twitch, to my Twitter, to my Steam. Oh my God, I got so much social media. Follow it if you get the chance. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.